Hello everyone, welcome back to Tutorials of Tone. My name is Alex. Thank you so much for watching. What we're talking about today is quacking like a duck. We're going to create an Ottawa in the Fractal ecosystem, whether you're on the FM3, the FM9, or the Axe FX3. This is a wonderful, powerful, dynamic tool, and you can have a lot of fun just like in the intro. So let's dive right into this. All you need is a wah block and a little bit of know-how with your controllers menu. So, set your wah the way you like it. This is what I have for this funk band I play with, Sumo 7. All of the settings, you can pick any wah type, Vox, Morley, Crybaby, Paragon, whatever you like. Once you're ready, you have your graphic EQ set, if you're using it, go to your control knob, Find source one, find the envelope follower. This is so that the wah reads your input. We're going to go to the controllers tab up here. And in this menu, we're going to go to envelope and manual. Set your input source to one. I personally go to the gain first. I set this to 1.7. If you have it at stock settings, you don't quite have enough juice at the front end. But if you set it too high, you'll be feathering the string and really getting the high toe down end of the wall. Find to taste. I have found 1.7 for this touch wah sort of stuff. Next up, I go to the threshold. I try to set this somewhere between negative 27.5 dB and negative 35 dB. And the reason I do that is so I get the full dynamics of my playing and I get that touch sensitive wah thing. If you set the threshold super low, negative 60, <laughs> It lets everything through, and you really don't get a sense of that wah unless you're very, very lightly touching. Subsequently, if you turn it up too high, you're going to really have to dig in to get that. So, I have found for this sort of playing, negative 31. Or like the intro. I take the attack and I offset it just a little bit. 13.7 milliseconds, thereabouts. I do that so the wah isn't taking the brunt of my transients and we can really get a dynamic sound out of that. You know, who would have thought guitar players with dynamics? If you have it at one, where I have it, crank it. In this, we're looking at about a quarter second before we get the wah to come in. So you could create a wah without an expression pedal with this by cranking it. Kind of a cool effect. It'd be really cool to set this up with a pitch block with an arpeggiator and get some nice synth arpeggiations going on. Then we have the release. How quickly does this envelope follower release? Again, I have this just above stock. Stock is at one. Releases very quickly. You could also put that really high. And it takes quite a bit to bring that wah down. So for what I do, 
I really like these settings, but it's entirely to taste. You can also use this with lead tones, which is wonderful. <laughs> When I'm doing that, I might even bring the max frequency down on a different channel. Or you could bring the controller over, reset this. Seven, one point seven, and change your threshold to be more reactive to what you're doing on your lead tone. If you're doing those dynamic picking spots, big swells or picking really hard, you might want to bring that threshold up. I might leave it here. Super cool. The possibilities are endless. You can have so much fun with this. You can do big long chord holds, which is super fun, and get that late 60s, early 70s vibe going. Set your threshold accordingly. A really cool textural guitar idea. Now let's not forget you can also do this with a bass. Here I have my Music Man bongo five string, my number one bass. Here it is with the clean tone. <laughs> Than with an Ottawa. Super, super cool effect on bass. I use this as well in Sumo 7 every now and then when you want to pop in a solo, just pop out in the mix. All of the settings very much the same. Still using an envelope follower on source one of the control feature. If you notice, we have 120 hertz to 1800 hertz on the wah. Now this is based on the Dunlop Crybaby for bass. This is the frequency range thereabouts. So really helpful if you're going to be a bass player using this to get the frequency range right, because if you're up here in no man's land, like I would be for funk guitar. You start to lose some of those low frequencies. The really bass characteristic things. So play with that. Maybe set stuff in the middle. I have 250 and 2K. Super fun. Still go to the control tab, input source is input one. The gain, release, and attack all set the same. But the threshold, being that this is an active bass, I set a little higher. So I still get a little bit of that wah sound out of this. If you go too high, you get mostly heel sound, and if you go too low, get mostly toe. So setting it somewhere in that middle range is really nice. This is a great, great thing for bass players and guitar players alike. One other thing you can do with this is set the envelope follower backwards so that it goes from toe to heel. Really, 
really fun stuff and you can get a lot of a different shape, a different color, a different style of playing out of this, something that you might use in synth bass things. For example, on a synth bass you might have this in with a octave pedal and a little bit of fuzz. Setting that to the bridge pickup just like you would wah guitar and really going to town on that. It's a super fun way to engage the auto wah in synth bass type tones. But I digress. This is a topic for another video. If you have any questions on running an auto wah and envelope filter, please leave it in the comments. Any other suggestions you have for fractal bass videos, I'd be happy to dive in and showcase what I've learned so far and maybe learn some new things based on the questions you have. So get to it. Enjoy this stuff. Quack, 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 Mr. Ducksworth. And we'll see you next time.